All right, welcome back to the uh, Bitcoin.com news show. I'm here uh, again with my good friend, uh, Gabriel Cardona. Yes, I'm back. Great to be back in Tokyo. And uh, of course, my name is Corbin. I'm back here filling in for Roger. Roger is out of the country currently and uh, on the road. Yep. And we're going to go over some of the upcoming show notes here. Uh, today, we've got a special, including a subscriber giveaway. RBTC surpasses 250,000 subscribers, which is Mazel tov, guys. That's great. Yeah. SLP token growth and developments, 1,774 BCH cash shuffle transaction, mm -hmm. and BCH decentralized exchange, which is launching quite soon. It may already be out, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what's going on? Um, I guess I'll jump in first and just read this <clears throat> off. So we have a special Bitcoin.com YouTube subscriber giveaway. The team at Bitcoin.com is giving away three tickets to the Malta AI and Blockchain Summit coming up May on 23rd. Uh, that was read a little awkwardly, I apologize. Coming up May the 23rd. Win full access to the expo workshops and all the conferences. Tickets are valued at 799 euros each. Details on how to enter will be outlined at the end of this show. Make sure to stick around. Those of you on the live stream, feel free to uh, follow along. We'll make sure that we tweet that out as well. Ensure that you're following at Bitcoin.com on Twitter and we'll ensure that all of those notes get out to you and you guys can uh, get your name in ASAP. Mm -hmm. So first off, let's maybe cover the RBTC. Are you a, you're a subscriber? I've seen oh, you post of course, RBTC, I love RBTC. Right? I'm there every day. So RBTC is kind of the go-to destination for mm -hmm. all things happening on on Bitcoin. It's the mm -hmm. decentralized. Uh, it's the uh, let's say uncensored Bitcoin subreddit. Exactly. Uh, there's been a huge issue, I think, in the R Bitcoin subreddit where we've had mods completely uh, removed from their power mm -hmm. simply for sharing things that promoted on-chain scaling. Mm -hmm. Our BTC is the opposite of that. It uh, opened mod logs. Amazing uh, moderation policy by guys like David Chairs. Mm -hmm. Huge shout out to David Chairs. He's just a, a, a machine online Definitely. and on Twitter and, and on Reddit. Exciting news though is RBTC finally surpassed 250,000 subscribers on Reddit, which is a huge, huge feat considering there's a big drive to hide and bury RBTC. Right, so RBTC is an interesting community because of course, our Bitcoin, I believe, has you know the most sort of Bitcoin traffic and conversation out of pretty much all of the different sort of dialogue and news outlets combined. You know, it's bigger than Bitcoin forums. It's bigger than our BTC. And so famously, when the scaling debate started happening, um, they started censoring people who came in there with uh, alternative scaling than, you know, second layer lightning solution, uh, lightning network and SegWit, etc. So a lot of those people ended up going on over to RBTC because this is before the BCH fork. And so the um, way RBTC handles is there really is no censorship. Um, Maybe stuff gets deleted if people are violent or make threats or do something that's totally inappropriate, but you can go on there and you can say whatever you want. You can insult whatever, whoever you want. You can go in there and do your thing and people won't remove it. And the reason is, is because what we want is a free and open marketplace of ideas so that ideas can compete against each other and then battle hardened ideas, the very best ones rise to the top. And that's what we want in innovation. That's what we want with our ideas. And that's what we want with anywhere. So if mm -hmm. you have Censorship. If your ideas are not able to compete against others and you have to resort to censorship, then that really says something about your ideas. Yes. <laughs> I think one of the most credible ways to think about this is the whole idea of Bitcoin is to be a censorship resistant money. Mm -hmm. And if, if a censorship resistant money can't exist without a censored without a censorship resistant platform, then we might be in, in a little bit of trouble. Sure. I think I've said that right. Yeah, absolutely. And I've also re read this week that uh, I don't go to our cryptocurrency. I'll, I'll be honest. Um, I'm pretty much focused <coughs> extremely on Bitcoin Cash. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Yeah, we have our machine here if anybody wants to scan <laughs> it and get, uh, get some candy. Uh, you can send 20 or 30 bucks and drain the whole thing. Um, <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> There's also our cryptocurrency, which I just read recently. Also, either got a mod, got a mod from our Bitcoin or something. They've been now dealing with more um, censorship as well in the last yeah. couple of weeks. Is that true? Yeah, I, I mean, our cryptocurrency, once upon a time, was a little bit more free and open, and it was a place where you were able to discuss a little bit more off-topic to topics about just general cryptocurrency. But even even lately, it seems like the moderation policy there is getting quite stringent. There. Mm -hmm. For instance, if, 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 if an article is shared from a news source that they deem inappropriate, mm. they'll simply just sure. remove the post. So any, any, any news source, including news.bitcoin.com, oh, including sure. some others that they feel are somehow tainted because of 
big blockers or because of you know big cashers as they like to call us. Mm -hmm. um, we we see still a lot of censorship on on that particular subreddit. And, and one of the reasons censorship is so powerful, there's this great experiment. You guys can go uh, Google. There's a video for this. Maybe if we can get the YouTube, we'll drop it in the description below. I know Roger has talked about it in the past. It's really worth watching this uh, video. It's so good. It's like three minutes. And what it is is it shows this office room, and everybody in there is an actor, and they're in some type of study. Um, and then there's one person who doesn't know what's going on. It's like a guy. And he goes in there to a doctor's appointment. He talks to the lady at the desk and he sits down. And about 30 or 40 seconds later, there's a beep. And everybody in the room just stands up and sits back down. Maybe like 30 or 60 seconds later, it happens again. And they keep doing it. And it's, he's looking around. And the first few times, he's like, what's going on? And then he kind of just realizes, oh, that's what, that's what everybody's doing here. So he picks up this action without even understanding it. And one by one, the actors get called back to the doctor and then they start bringing in other people who don't know what's up. And the first lady who comes in sits down next to him and it's just him and her. And it beeps and he stands up and she looks at him and he kind of socially signals to her, you stand up when it beeps. <laughs> and so he ends up teaching this weird behavior that he just picked up by other people and he doesn't really even know the root of it. So the reason I mention it is it's a big, you can draw a big parallel between there and the dialogue between scaling. Mm. If you go back to you know, 2012, 2013, it was obvious that we would just scale off the blocks and that would be a path forward. But then whenever those conversations got censored and everybody else came in and just started training that you can't, you know, scaling on chain is absolutely insane. Censorship, uh, um, decentralization, all of this stuff, that's what became the religion. Yeah. Then that's what became the conversation. So today, whenever you're on Reddit or you're on any of these <laughs> censorship, uh, censored subreddits, half of the dialogue is being like shoved down your throat from mm. people who just learned it from other people from some time in the past. There is a tremendous amount of regurgitation of, yeah. of facts and I think it's really clear that it's rare to have a unique thought these days. Mm. And it's, especially online, we're all to some degree regurgitating things we've heard or read or interpreting, but the amount of people that are actually taking that information, giving it proper thought and saying, I'm seeing it from all angles. I'm seeing, I'm seeing the other person's point of view. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm straw manning and steel manning my own arguments at the sure. same time while trying to find out if I'm correct or if truth can be found in whatever it is that we're debating. Um, I think it's really important that we highlight that if you haven't had a chance to check out this video, it was just published, I think, yesterday. Jason King, one of the former Reddit R, or Reddit R Bitcoin moderators, Jason King, he was actually removed as a mod simply for removing a post in which Roger Veer was called a Nazi. Oh, really? So it's an interesting interview with Matt Aaron. I'd go check it out. It's on the uh, Humans of Bitcoin podcast, I believe. Got go it. check that one out. But it's also on our YouTube channel. It's a great little video that kind of summarizes it. And I think it's just really key to see that it's there's some goofy censorship going on in this community. There's a lot of hostile actors. There's a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of strange vested interests that want to prevent peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash from succeeding. And if we don't fight through that and build communities that allow that communication to happen, we're destined to repeat to ourselves. Yeah, and it's worth asking, you know, what is so special about cryptocurrencies that so many different parties would put so much of their energy into time, trying to discredit them or take them down? It really gives you a sense of how powerful the technology we're dealing with really is. Um, in the same way that the web democratized information, Bitcoin Cash will democratize money, and that's like human condition level stuff. So Exciting it doesn't stuff. surprise me that it's getting attacked. So speaking of decentralization and the whole idea of being able to surpass censorship, uh, BISC. BISC was a, it was built to be a decentralized exchange. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, recently they took politics into account and removed Bitcoin Cash. Hmm. So uh, there was a bounty put out for approximately $5,000, and then developer Emilio Gonzalez uh, built and forked the BISC project and built the BCH Decentralized Exchange based off the BISC, the open source platform. Nice. It's now available for testing. Uh, they're encouraging the Bitcoin Cash community to come out, help provide some liquidity. I think there's some new updates coming, but it sounds like they're making some great progress on this. And uh, of course, we need more decentralized exchanges and more ability for users to trade without permission from anyone. And I think it's really uh, an exciting exciting time in, to be around the space to see more of these projects come to light. Sure. I mean, anybody who's seen my talk on the token brain explosion, uh, I mentioned that now, when I talk about the timeline, you know, in 2010, 2011, 2013, people were already talking about putting assets on the blockchain and colored coins. People yeah. were already talking about smart contracts and de decentralized autonomous organizations and decentralized exchanges. 
And so as soon as you have assets and they're on the blockchain, you need a way to exchange them. And today, of course, you can go on exchanges, but there's a place the government can come and put their finger down. Having a decentralized exchange is a big, big deal. Huge a, deal. Yeah, it's been like a promise uh, that's been coming for a long time. So I think that's very exciting. Um, other random exchange uh, news, we're working with a couple exchanges. Some of them I don't think yet are public, so I won't announce it, but <laughs> you would know the exchange if I told you their name. And then another one is public already. We recently got the ACD token listed on the Coin Super Exchange out of Hong Kong, but um, we're working with exchanges right now getting BCH and SLP tokens integrated. So there's a lot of stuff happening behind the scenes there. That Things we'll are moving very, about. very fast. It's exciting. Yes. We should mention Cash Shuffle moving fast. Yeah, that's a big one. Can I take this one? Yeah, please. All right, so Cash Shuffle showcases a 1,774 BCH transaction for less than one cent. So this was, I believe, yesterday, the largest transaction ever. Um, if I remember correctly, it was, is that $400,000 or am I off with that figure? Um, it was a yeah, lot. It was, around a half a million. Yeah, it was, yeah. A, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars, yeah. and they did this for a, a penny or less. Mm. And so, you know, privacy is a basic human right, and um, privacy coins... I think will end up getting pushback from governments because they're so absolutely disruptive that you know governments are going to have a problem with that. So in the same way, you know, we know that our strength is cash. When somebody says, what is Bitcoin? You know, like, can you, it's so complicated. What is this crazy Bitcoin? You, you say, actually, it's not complicated at all. Bitcoin is cash for the internet. Yeah. Boom. And so you realize, well, if that's your strength, everything we have builds upon that. So, you know, our tokens, they're built upon, they, they complement our cash. Our privacy layer complements our cash. So. Cash Shuffle um, today is supported um, in Electron Cash. Go download it, uh, install it on your computer, turn on Cash Shuffle, you literally click a button, send yourself $5 in BCH to that wallet, and then just start watching it shuffle, and it'll start creating transactions in the background, and that'll create a liquidity pool for everybody else. And so uh, Bitcoin Cash transactions are up from 5,000 a day to around 50,000 a day over the last three months, and I believe Cash Shuffle is a big part of that. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, there was a recent release of a new Cash Shuffle, was it with Cash Shuffle for JavaScript enabled wallets? There was, correct? yeah, so shout out to Acid Exploit and Always and On. Mm. Um, that's the person I know of who was working on it most, but I'm sure John O'Fukeball and ZQuest Z and everybody else mm. were involved. There is now a JavaScript Cash Shuffle library which has done its first shuffle. We recently did some changes to Badger, which I'll address maybe a little bit later, but uh, we did the first steps. So we're going to also be supporting Cash Shuffle and then it's going to be coming to the Bitcoin.com wallet cool. as well. So. Very cool. We should maybe yeah highlight that the this is coming very soon. So soon that we're excited, but we can't give it any, any dates, but coming very, very soon. The, the guys behind Cash Shuffle have been working hard on uh, building that pull request for the Bitcoin.com mm -hmm. wallet, which means we'll have a huge number of additional wallets that will be built to shuffle. And there are points. further privacy protocols, and I will be I will admit ignorance on this because I haven't even dug in at all. But I know just over the last 72 hours, John has started fleshing out Cash Fusion, yeah. which is another some, uh, something that adds to Cash Shuffle. And I don't even know how, so I'm going to play a little bit ignorant here. But there's even further iterations on this protocol. And I really, really, sort of as a side note, you know, Cash is just like the coolest brand ever. Mm. Um, Johnny Cash? Just Yeah, just Cash, Cash Fusion, Cash, cash Shuffle, Cash, like I, I love it. Dot yeah. Cash Domains, Cash Dot is cash just domains so, are so, my so favorite, smooth. Man. Yeah, you got to own that one, mm -hmm. Cash, yeah. Cash for the world, guys. Cash for the world. SLP Agora. Mm -hmm. What do you know about SLP Agora? This one I haven't had a chance to dabble into. You know, much. I haven't either, but I know that this is, and I believe it's only from the command line so far. I don't think there's a GUI and I don't think there's a JavaScript library, but as far as I understand, this is like a SLP exchange from the command line that uses opcheck data sig. Mm -hmm. um, well, who's it created by? It Tobias Bruce, Ruck. Tobias Ruck. I don't know who Tobias Ruck is. Do you know? Mm, no, no. I haven't either. Tobias, I don't know who you are. If yeah, you are, reach out it. to us. Yeah. Yeah, it's great work. So um, I saw on Reddit the other day, I believe he posted like 48 hours after I went live, there were already 50 tokens listed or something wow. like that. So, you know, like a big part of this token brain explosion thing is getting things listed on exchanges yeah. because as soon as anything has value, it's going to accelerate. Even if something's worth a thousandth of a penny, it's if you had a thousand of them, that's a penny, right? So yeah. it's sort of like as soon as these things start getting any value, it's going to set it off. So we really do need exchanges. And, you know, think about the way... Coinex launched. So if you remember when Coinex launched, they were like one of the very first BCH trading pairs, if yeah. not the very first one. And they leveraged that single feature into being pretty big, pretty quick, and making a decent amount of money. 
Um, were they the biggest last year? Probably not, but I guarantee you that Hypo and those guys did quite well. Mm. And so I suspect the same thing will be, happen for the first SLP exchange. Just kind of like the first team which pulls this together and does BCH and SLP tokens, I suspect they're going to have a very valuable uh, asset on their hands. So. We should mention too that uh, this Agora was all built out using Object Data Sig, which mm -hmm. is being included in some new tools, including uh, Last Will, which is a, is it Leecho's Last Will? Uh, it's, uh, I know it's for Electron Cash. Yeah, yeah, it's like a plugin for Electron yeah. Cash that allows you to basically set the, uh, what, what would you call it? Uh, Dead man switch. Yeah, and boy, can I speak to the value of this. Yeah. So without going down this rabbit hole, I recently, in December, my father passed away. And so I went to deal with his estate. And if anybody has ever dealt with an estate of a family member, they realize it's just an incredibly uncomfortable situation. You have to go through their stuff. You have to get a sense of what they wanted to do with what, when, and where, who gets what. It's just not what you want to push onto your family yeah. if you can imagine yourself not being there. So after I left that, I went home immediately to California and I created my own will so I can make sure that my son and my family would be set up if something happened to me. And then something like this happened. So basically you can create like a dead man's switch on Electron Cash so that you can you can set up a will and you can say if I pass away all my crypto goes to my son and then if you pass away you can have some type of um, switch on your actual wallet which will send your send your crypto to your family so this is a big deal if you've never had to deal with anything like that you're fortunate but it is a life circumstance that everybody will deal with and it's worth getting that one in order yeah plan ahead guys and ensure mm -hmm. that people know how you're gonna back up your seeds if you've mm -hmm. got them available to people that you trust if you're giving them a, a couple cuts of them and there's a, several techniques on proper ways to back up your private keys ensure mm -hmm. that you check those out we've got a bunch of different ways listed on bitcoin.com go check out our getting started guide where it'll break down some of the most recommended ways to deal with uh, your cold storage wallets yep because remember if you don't have your keys you don't have your coins and then if you have any amount of coins which you would not want to lose which is different to every single person you want to keep it in some type of hardware wallet or some type of paper wallet, something that's offline and probably encrypted as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one more point before we get to comments. Yeah. It says SLP token continues to be created. Oh, con SLP tokens continue to be created daily, with the SLP torch now being passed to over 50 Twitter users who have held the SLP token on Bitcoin Cash. So this is pretty cool. So, yeah. you know. Hey, thanks, guys. Uh, non fungible tokens, NFTs, are like a, a really interesting thing which emerged from the Ethereum ecosystem. So, that's basically like if you need a token which only has a single representation in the entire information space. So, like, there's only one of these pins ever in all of the universe, right? This is it. Um, you can do this now with tokens, non-fungible tokens. So we support this in SLP. So, so, so if you guys may remember, there was like a lightning, net, a lightning torch or something that was going around. So somebody created an SLP torch and they only created one of them. <laughs> and I did have a fear somebody was going to troll out on yeah, it or something, yeah. but it's made it 50 people and That's it's great. made it around the world. So I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Someone was at one point trying to buy it off of me. Really? I, I did have it and they <laughs> wanted it simply to burn it and sure. I refused to do it <laughs> in spite of bribery, guys. So I held out. Um, <laughs> we should go through the comments, but maybe before we do that, do you want to give us a little breakdown on, on what your team has been working on? Sure. So, of course, we always have a ton of stuff going on on my team, on the developer services team. Um, we now have seven people on my team I was just talking about before, all engineers. So it's like just every single day, tons and tons of stuff. So the primary things we're focusing on, of course, are we have our SDKs, Bitbox and SLP SDK, um, which are seeing more downloads than ever. We have rest.bitcoin.com, which last week got... <clears throat> over 10 million or 12 million requests. Um, it's got to be one of the most active assets in the entire ecosystem. I absolutely adore that website. We have slpdb.com, which is like a Mongo collection of real time, the entire token graph of SLPDB, SLP. And then we're working on Badger, of course. So, you know, Badger is still relatively small. We've only got a few thousand users, but it's a few thousand very passionate users, and it's having an oversized impact on the ecosystem. And the way we view it is, Bitcoin Cash has the potential to be as meaningful as the web and beyond. And in the same way that if you were running a web browser from two or three years ago, you wouldn't get the experience of the modern web. If you're not running a modern wallet, you will not get the full uh, experience that Bitcoin Cash has to offer. Mm. So we created Badger just to be a state-of-the-art wallet, which is super intuitive, which just pushes the entire ecosystem forward. And we wanted to do Cash ID, Cash Accounts, Cash Shuffle, and Tokens. So um, recently we made some big changes to Badger Wallet where we're moving towards being a full HD wallet so that we can start doing Cash Shuffle. It's very exciting. I actually do have a early uh, copy of this yeah. on my device. We've been testing it out. It's very exciting. Yeah. Huge shout out to the developers that have been working on that. It's Yeah, so that's the other one. We got Badger Mobile. So Badger Mobile now is a working prototype on Android and iOS. 
Um, so many people know we have the Bitcoin.com wallet. It's incredibly popular. I believe it's now at like 3.8 million wallets yeah, have been created. Yeah, we're pushing 4 million, yeah. And so they are recreating um, an Android and an iOS wallet from scratch in Kotlin and Swift. But we built Badger Mobile in React Native because we really, really need a, a mobile SLP wallet right now to jumpstart the ecosystem. So in the same way, we knew that all the preconditions were all the preconditions for the token ring explosion were in place. What we really needed were was SLPDB, like a real-time database of the entire token graph, and we needed a token wallet. And so we created those two things and we set it off. And so for it to go to the entire next step, we need exchange support and we need a mobile wallet. So that's what we're doing now. So we have a prototype, as he mentioned, he's got it on his device there. <laughs> it's great. Um, it's I cool. just started setting up the Android and iOS Play Stores and everything yesterday. We hope to be live in the app stores within two weeks. Wow, that's huge. Yeah. Huge. huge. Two weeks. That puts us mid-May? Yeah, that's the plan. Wow, incredible. Yeah. So we should go through some comments. Uh, before we start reading these, maybe if anyone on the Twitch live stream wants to ask anything, we can pop in and follow up afterwards. Uh, of course, if you aren't watching, we stream live from Japan every Friday at 5 p.m. Please feel free to join twitch.com slash bitcoin.com. You can also follow us uh, on Twitter at bitcoin.com and we share the link out anytime we're about to hop on live stream. Of course, we uh, enjoy a follow and a like on Twitch, but of course, don't, don't shy away from sh hitting subscribe on YouTube and of course, hitting like and leave some comments on the next video. And what are you on Twitter? I am Maple Syrup Sucker on Twitter. Maple yeah. Syrup Sucker. I'm yeah. C.G. Cardona, C-A-R-D-O-N-A. Yeah. Go give us a follow. So I think there are a couple questions here. Let's drop them. Let's get sure. who we got. So it says, love the work and philosophy of your team. Thank you so much, Belupton. Appreciate that. Uh, Zwest says, yeah, great episode of Humans of Bitcoin. Belupton, what's the link for Badger? Badger.bitcoin.com. Please go tell your friends. Um, I can't wait to see what cool token use, use cases people come up with. Neither can I, of course. Um, a couple of things we did. We launched the Liberland token, so yeah. LLM merits. Uh, I got some merits now. Yeah, went, no, you went, did. Went shopping, yeah. Nice. <laughs> had, a little, had a little splurge. Yeah, so we launched a Liberland merit today. Gosh, there's so much happening behind the scenes that we that we <laughs> yeah. can't really talk about because they're biz dev deals. But just today, we had a huge deal about a potential token being built. I hate to be that guy who does that, but there's so much happening behind the scenes. It's very, very incredibly <laughs> exciting. Um, it says, are we ready for the fork? So yes, uh, Schnorr signatures are coming on May 15th. We do have a testnet uh, Schnorr signature up on our Explorer. Um, I am going to create a bounty this week. We have a, I don't know how much is in our bounty wallet, a few hundred dollars. Mm. We have a bounty wallet for our team that we can just issue bounties. I, I want to create a bounty to add Schnorr signatures to Bitbox. They're, we're not ready there yet, but we do have an Explorer up for it. Yeah, go check out explorer.bitcoin.com. There's the testnet available uh, over there. And this uh, says, is it on test flight on iOS? Uh, not yet, because I just started setting up the uh, account yesterday, but it will be soon. It uh, says, any news about the unknown miners? So all I know is that all of a sudden, a huge amount of hash power jumped onto the network and was Sneaky. signing the, there was a message in the Coinbase, I believe, that just said Nakamoto Satoshi Nakamoto. Or Satoshi or Somebody, I, I don't know the name, didn't ring a bell, but i um, kidding. So yeah, you know, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what can you even say about something like that? Somebody with a lot of money, because hash power equals money, mm. is signing at Satoshi Nakamoto. What does that mean? Salty Satoshi? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but well, that's very, very, very interesting. It'll um, be interesting. Stay tuned, I guess. Not yeah. really much we can say on that regard. Personally, I'm not that concerned with it. The, the roadmap of Bitcoin Cash is pretty clear. Visit bitcoincash.org slash roadmap.html. You can go sure. check it out. Simple breakdown of how we're going to scale to... Uh, I think the game plan is what, 10 billion, no, sorry, 50 transactions per day for 10 billion people. That's correct, on chain. All on chain, guys. So yep. it can be done. We are scaling this thing on chain. It's going to be exciting. So come join the party. Uh, I guess we should read through some of these comments from last week's video. We've got a comment from Brent Nallies at BCH for the win. Of it's course. true. Yeah, there are some good, interesting stats. So if you think about it, you know, after, just let's just, just kind of focus in on the since December. Hmm. You know, we, we went down to a low of, we're probably up nearly 300% from the low. We're up, you know, 10 times from the low of transaction volume. We've got innovation with cash shuffle and SLP tokens and avalanche. We've got a hard fork coming with Schnorr signatures, which are going to solve transaction malleability in a more privacy centric uh, and simple way than um, SegWit and enable smart contracts and lightning network and all kinds of other stuff. Bitcoin cash for the win. Yeah, it's exciting. So yeah. next up, we've got one from Patrick Banek. Recently contacted Elipay as they have been greenlighted to operate legally here in Croatia and will soon support Bitcoin Cash in a cafe bar. Going to remember to add it to the coin Marco Coino list. 
Yeah, please do. MarcoCoino.Bitcoin.com. Mm. Best app out there if you want to know where to spend your Bitcoin cash near you as cash. Mm -hmm. um, if you ever come to somewhere like Tokyo or in North Queensland, uh, Australia, you'll see you can spend Bitcoin cash like cash. It's pretty amazing. Ellie Pay, huge shout out to those guys. They, they visited the office. Incredibly, incredibly just generous, good good guys, good, smart, talented. They are very much have this this big dream for the BTC city. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, Go go hop on Marco Coino. You'll see a big, big dump of uh, Bitcoin Cash enabled merchants and shops and stores and things like that. Very cool. Very exciting stuff there. Uh, next, we got Gary Sucks. It says Merchant Services with BCH. Big thumbs up, boys and girls. Hey, Roger. Hope all is good. We'll pass that on. Yeah, we'll pass that on. Roger's not here. <laughs> And uh, one more time, I think it's a big one for Roger, but we'll yeah. read it. It says, Roger Vera, CEO of Bitcoin.com. That's great, Roger. I hope you're doing well and taking Bitcoin Cash to the world. I'm with you, Roger. Definitely, Bitcoin should be a cash system where we can spend it on a daily basis and save for the future. I'm looking forward to the upcoming years, and together we will prevail. Very exciting. Yep. So just a couple questions maybe for you, just to kind of, I guess, end this whole thing. Mm -hmm. If you were to go back in time a year ago from today, mm -hmm. Are we in a better spot today than we were then? That's a great question. So um, I would say yes. Um, you know, I'm an engineer. So of course we all like money and we all want to make money and that's great. But what really turns me on is the technology. So sure, last year when Bitcoin Cash was worth more and the entire ecosystem was worth more, that would probably be to a lot of people when it was more exciting. But as an engineer, you know, like one of the great things about the bear market is that it's really just shaken out a lot of people and the only people who have stuck in around are the builders. Yeah. So six weeks ago I was in Hong Kong for blockchain week and I was just telling Corbin that was when the price was much lower than even today and when I left I told everybody the tide has turned. Like what I just witnessed in Hong Kong there are so many smart people doing so many amazing projects across so many different blockchains that if you focus on that you realize the tide has turned and all boats rise with the tide. And so, as he mentioned before we started, this is definitely the most productive bear market that's ever happened. And if you are looking from an engineering perspective, I would say yes. And further, I think in the same way that I think the BTC and the BCH fork were really good, and I'm so glad they happened or I wouldn't even literally be in the seat where I'm at today, the BCH and the BSV fork were one of the greatest things that could have happened for BCH and BSV because those two camps really needed to shake out so they could pursue their different visions for whatever they're worth. Mm -hmm. So. To me, this is the most fun I've ever had in my career. This is the most impact I've ever had and the best work I've ever done with the coolest people ever. Hey, we're no. definitely in a better place now than we were. It, it feels like yesterday, but it also feels like a lifetime ago that we called you up and said, Gabriel, do you want to <laughs> hop on call with Roger? It's true. We, we saw this BitBox thing. This thing's pretty cool. I was sitting in my office in San Francisco. It was like 1130 at night. I get a text from Maple Syrup Sucker, who I didn't know who it was. And he's like, is it, are you the guy behind BitBox? And I'm like, I am. He goes... Roger really likes your work. Do you want to talk to him? And I'm like, heck yeah. And like 30 seconds later, Corbin and Roger are sitting right here with the backdrop and I'm chatting with them. Yeah. And Roger's like, man, we love what you're doing. We want to bring it under our brand. Do you want to move to Tokyo? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's been an adventure. I, I, I think we're seeing the ecosystem that's really built around Badger and the ecosystem that's built around SLP and, and Bitbox. It, it's exciting. We're, we're seeing mm -hmm. developers that are completely new to the space, mm -hmm. developers that are old, people switching from BTC mm -hmm. back to BCH, guys who've dabbled in Ethereum mm -hmm. coming over to BCH. Mm -hmm. It's really uh, quite an exciting time to be a developer. So if you're new to the developer space and mm -hmm. you're not sure where to start, if you're a computer science grad or if you're fresh out of high school and you just like to dabble in, in some mm -hmm. JS, had to developers is developer.bitcoin.com both results so yeah, okay. developer.bitcoin.com <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean we are true engineers we are makers we are creators this is what i do when i wake up in the morning these are the problems i solve and our goal is to create the very best developer tooling in the world and to have it be for bitcoin cash so if you're a developer if you're curious if you're a professional student whatever check out developer.bitcoin.com bitcoin cash it's going to be cash for the world mm -hmm. you're all a part of the ride we really thank you guys for tuning in follow us give us a like give us a subscribe Go yep. follow CG Cardona, Cardona. Cardona on yeah. Twitter and uh, Maple Syrup Sucker and of course Bitcoin Com on Twitter. Uh, thank you again. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.